hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. You can also see on the screen uh, Nick Katko, who I will introduce shortly. Today's webinar is part of the Energize Your Journey webinar series that we're doing with the Association for Manufacturing Excellence. The series will highlight a number of presenters that you'll meet at the annual AME conference in Toronto which is occurring uh, October 26th through the 30th. Uh, AME is also exploring some options that would introduce a virtual component to the conference, so stay tuned for more details on that. And do stay tuned at the end of our webinar today as we'll be sharing a special discount code that will provide $500 off the standard registration fee for attending the conference. Well, let's turn our attention to our presentation today. Uh, today's session is being recorded, so look for an email shortly after we end with a link to the recording. And please do share this with others in your organization, especially if you have a finance and accounting organization maybe that's not yet exploring the principles and practices of lean accounting. Also, because of the short nature of our webinar, we will not be fielding questions. However, our presenter will share his email uh, and would be happy to address individual questions should you have them. Uh, so feel free to fire those off in Nick's direction. So let me introduce our presenter for today, Nick Katko. Nick is an early pioneer of lean accounting. In the 1990s as CFO, he implemented a complete lean management accounting system, which included uh, eliminating standard costing. Nick is now president of BMA, where he has worked since 2002, and he is author of a couple books I'll mention, The Lean CFO, as well as The Lean Business Management System. So for now, uh, Nick, I'll go ahead and hand things over to you. Thanks for being with us. All right. Thanks, Dwayne, and uh, welcome, everyone, to today's webinar, and I hope wherever you are, in this world, you are still say, staying safe and healthy. So let's get started. We're gonna talk about lean accounting. And in 30 minutes, here is our very brief agenda. We're gonna talk about the strategy behind lean accounting, why it's necessary, why is it important? How does it fit in with your lean strategy? We're gonna talk about the economics of lean. How does lean work financially? This is important to understand because it is a foundation for a lot of the analysis and decision making in uh, lean accounting. We'll talk about uh, uh, the principles and practices and very high level of lean management accounting. Uh, I'll describe the benefits of lean accounting and how do we actually get into a lean accounting transformation process. <clears throat> In, in terms of the strategy, um, and a lot of this presentation, the way I'm presenting it, is really designed for you to get a basic understanding of lean accounting, and if necessary, how do you explain lean accounting to others in your organization, especially those who don't understand what lean accounting is? Um, over the years, the argument or the reasoning for lean accounting has been, well, standard costing is bad. Well, that is a true statement, standard costing is bad. However, that as an opening statement to make a case for lean accounting doesn't get very far. Uh, it's the same analogy, for example, if you were looking at uh, a manufacturing operation and you went in and said, well, you need to do lean in your manufacturing operation because your, your processes stink. And that, that's not gonna open up anybody's mind to a new way of doing things. So it, it's really important to focus on lean accounting as a strategic tool that is part of an overall lean transformation and be able to explain the benefits. <clears throat> so in general, how do you explain lean accounting in about a minute? First of all, lean accounting is applying lean thinking 
to all accounting and finance processes and systems. It's about developing a deep understanding of value to accounting's customers. And it's real, lean management accounting is really about the value to accounting's internal customers, the users of all of the information that comes out of a management accounting system. We wanna flow that value to all our customers and we want to respond to pull. And within a lean organization, what this really means is lean accounting is about service excellence. How do we flow the value to our customers, our internal customers? First of all, we need to know what they really, really need. And one of the problems and issues with most uh, conventional management accounting systems is that they have not adopt, adapted to the need to the new needs of their users, which are now operating in a lean world. We need to develop system thinking. And the numbers that show up in any management report, that show up in even in financial statements, are the result of systems about the way the business is working. And if you think of an organization, it's a bunch of little systems working little we have processes we have value streams but it's all about systems so the whole idea and this is more from a finance and accounting view is accounting needs to develop a, an understanding of the systems and even lean is a system in unto itself we need to adopt a learning attitude whether it's in accounting or in any part of the organization, uh, we have to realize we, we really don't understand why the numbers are what they are. Now, in a conventional view, there's a lot of certainty. Oh, well, we know, you know, our margin should be this or our cost of labor should be that. And it develops a lot of certainty. And so if the numbers don't appear to be right, you draw some conclusions. Lean is about really getting to the root cause of problems, whether they're operational or financial. So we have to adopt the learning attitude, meaning we really don't know the true root causes behind these numbers. So we need to adopt a plan, do, check, act mentality to get us there so that we can ultimately drive financial success. And finally, we want to develop a deep understanding of relationships. The relationships between people, processes, and performance. The relationship between operating performance, capacity performance, and financial performance, for example. That these relationships are very, very dynamic. They're not static. And so, when we looked at something six months ago, that uh, some of those assumptions may not hold today for many reasons. It could be business reasons. It could be because of improvements that were made. So it's all about driving service excellence into the organization through the management accounting system. The economics of lean. We need to understand how lean works financially in very simplistic terms to understand the basis for the need for a lean management accounting system. Now, lean is first and foremost about learning, and it's really about people learning. Uh, they, they get better at their work by learning. They learn how to solve problems. They are also trained in the capabilities to solve the problems. They can analyze. And ultimately, the result of improvement in a big scheme of things is that an organization does things tomorrow that it can't do today. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's how lean works. And it's really about problem solving. So that leads to what are the financial benefits of lean? 
and they are not direct, nor are they immediate. Why? Well, there first there's a <clears throat> excuse me, a commitment to a lean strategy. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, we're studying, we're learning about the business and operating processes, and we're solving problems. So this takes time. It takes time to learn. Just think about uh, you in any of your education, whether it was you know as a child or in college, you didn't learn everything the first day in school. I mean, you know, in, in it takes a semester in college to learn everything in one course. Well, the same thing is true about solving problems in the business. So that's why there's this delay in seeing the financial benefits, because we're, we have to spend time learning. Once we do learn, we make improvements. That's the idea of eliminating waste. We're making improvements, and the primary result of making improvements is the creation of capacity or time. Now, time doesn't show up on the financial statements. And it, the lean financial strategy is, as you're creating all this capacity, how are you applying that capacity? Are you applying it to value-added activities and selling more? Are you redeploying that capacity? Or are you basically going through attrition and reducing your capacity in natural, normal ways? I'm not talking about firing people or whatever, but in natural, normal ways through like attrition. And only then do you really see the financial success. And so most business strategies are geared towards the short term and the common way that people think is we do something and we see a financial result and so when we're doing things and we're not seeing the financial result because it's all lean based then people begin to think is lean working and so part of the lean management accounting system is to provide that information that tells you exactly what is happening through the application of lean principles, practices, and tools, and how much are we improving? And then how are we applying that capacity and are we achieving the financial benefits? Let me show you a simple example of how the economics of lean works. So let's say we have a value stream and we can we sell our current demand or our current ability to produce and ship is a thousand units a month at two hundred dollars a unit. So here we see a very simple income statement based on actual costs. We have one hundred twenty thousand in material costs, sixty thousand in production costs. So we're making ten percent, pretty good. So what happens if, through improvements, you create twenty percent more capacity? So now you can, you have the the demand. So now you can produce and ship. 1,200 units a month. So the issue is, what does that really cost you and how much money will you make? Well, here's your answer. Your profit is going to go up 80%. It's going to go up from 20,000 a month to 36,000 a month. Why? Well, the only costs which really change are the, is the material cost. That's the variable cost. Your production costs are pretty much fixed. And production think of production costs as how much you're paying for capacity, primarily your labor and your machines. So if you create 20% more capacity, you don't have to spend any more money buying that capacity. It's, it's, you're already paying for it. And so we, a 20% of an increase in revenue leverages to an 80% increase in profits. Now, this is the financial power of lean. And this type of analysis, based on the economics of lean, needs to be incorporated into all analytical practices in the organization, because this is what can happen in a lean environment. If you have the right information and you're making decisions properly. 
without going into a whole lot of detail, because I could spend probably a few hours talking about this, standard costing information does not give you this type of analysis. And it will it could lead you down the wrong path, meaning it could tell you lean's not working. It could also make you make poor decisions about certain uh like the profitability of certain sales opportunities. But in a lean accounting environment, you get the right information. So let's talk about lean account, lean management accounting. One of the necessities for lean management accounting is that there's a lot of waste in conventional management accounting systems. And this is another way to approach lean accounting when you're talking to leaders in companies and finance and accounting people. Talk about the waste because lean accounting is all about eliminating that waste. So there's defects. So information is not aligned with lean and is often incorrect. And in the previous slide, I gave you that example about standard costing. So we want to improve the quality of the information so that it's aligned with our lean strategy. We have a lot of overproduction, a lot of unnecessary work steps. If you have any familiarity with a uh, manufacturing company with a standard costing system, think about all the work that goes on. And I'm not talking about just in accounting and finance, but how many people in operations are touching and have like necessary steps of recording information or analyzing information. There's a lot of waiting, long feedback loops. The information is not readily available when people need it. Most conventional management accounting systems focus on a monthly cycle, and that's way too long in a lean environment. Neglect of human talent not striving to improve to create value. Well, this is our management accounting system and by golly, we've been running it this way for 60 years and that's the way it works. We're not even gonna think about making improvements to it. That's total waste. The movement of information. Think about how much this information moves from the operational system into financial systems, into Excel reports, into system reports, there's a lot of movement. Setting the rates or the standards, that's batch processing. It's done once a year. Maybe it's done a few times a year in certain companies, but it's a very intensive process, by the way, which is totally wasteful. And uh, it's batch processing, it takes off, consumes a lot of resources. Motion. How about all of the meetings involved in discussing standard costing information, especially people who have questions about it? These could be formal team meetings. These could be uh, email questions. These could be casual drop-ins in the office. Can you explain this information to us? It could be emails, whatever it is. There's a lot of human motion involved in understanding this information. It's very complex to understand and many people don't really understand it, including finance and accounting people. Then there's the maintenance of these systems. Think about how much, how many, think about how many people are involved in the standard costing system. You have supply chain people, you have finance and accounting people, you have operational people. Maybe you have sales and marketing people. Maybe you have the, the nosy CEO who wants to get in there and see things. There's a lot of people involved in it and it's a high maintenance system. So lean accounting is about getting rid of all this waste. So what are the principles of lean management accounting? And again, it's, it's important to start with the principles and work down from there. Because if you start talking about the details first, nobody's gonna understand. And this is very similar to a lean transformation. You don't start talking about putting in a 
Kanban system in operations when nobody understands the principles of lean because they're not going to understand why do we even need this. So basic values or principles of lean management accounting. We need to deliver relevant and reliable information to meet the internal customer's needs. Who decides what's relevant and reliable? The customers. We want to get the right information to the right people at the right time at the right place. Lean has a lot of different operating cycles. You have daily huddles, you have weekly meetings, you have monthly meetings, you have continuous improvement events. There's a lot of different cycles of activity in a lean operation and that information needs to be available during those activities rather than having to wait for it or using outdated information. We're trying to improve the quality of all types of analysis and decision-making activities, whether it's financial, strategic, or operational. And finally, the spirit of continuous improvement is that we're gonna create this lean management accounting system, but we're never gonna stop trying to make it better. I was talking once to Watlow Electric, uh, very good, uh, lean accounting company. They've been at lean accounting for about 15 years and about five or seven years into the journey uh, in a casual conversation with someone who works there, they said, oh yeah, we've learned so much and we've made some changes from when we put things in six or seven years ago. So they had the spirit of continuous improvement. So what are we trying to do? Our system is about improving the quality of decision making. We need timely information to the users to improve the ability to predict outcomes or better analyze the past. That's relevant information. We all, it also needs to be reliable which means it's real, it's verifiable and valid. It represents reality. A standard costing system, the numbers there don't represent reality. Standard costing is a system, standards are estimates. They're not real, okay? They're just a best guess estimate. So why are you going to make decisions and why are you going to analyze based on estimated information? I mean, you know, it, it's like going to a restaurant and saying, well, you know, we think that this restaurant may charge uh, $50 a meal. So we're gonna go in there because that's what we wanna spend and you find out it's more. Well, you can go online and look and get the real information before deciding to go to that restaurant. We wanna create standardized work in all our analytical practices and our decision-making and this PDCA cycle, problem solving, any analysis that involves numbers is really trying to solve a problem. It's trying to, maybe it's a problem in operations, maybe it's a problem financially where we're not achieving our financial goals, or it could be an opportunity. For example, it could be a sales opportunity. If we have a customer who wants a special price on a specific order. How profitable is that order? That's a problem to solve. And that's really what we're doing with Lean Accounting. The benefits of Lean Accounting. We want to get away from traditional accounting, which is focused on financial reporting, fixing numbers, and that's not about making up numbers, but accounting basically just fixes the numbers to get the number to get the financial statements out. They never really look into the root causes of why are we having these problems in terms of receiving information late. We want to get away from the linear cause and effect, meaning we know what the cause of certain outcomes, certain financial numbers, certain operational numbers are, and we're totally certain about it. 
because you know what? It's very simple and we've been at it for a while. What we need to realize, as we talked earlier, is that these system relationships are complex. And because of changing business conditions, we need to open up our minds and adopt more of a root cause analysis view. And we want to get away from accounting being the isolated experts. How many times, if you worked in a business or you work in a business today, have you heard, oh, go see accounting? Okay, it's like, you know, I got to go see the accounting people. I got to go into the world of accounting to ask them a question, contact accounting. We want accounting to be part of the business. We want our accounting staff to be uh, financial coaches who are always accessible, who have the ability to teach and coach people to develop financial analytical skills throughout the organization. We want to want to get away from traditional financial improvement where you know from the top down from finance or through the from finance through the senior leadership team, you know, certain short-term initiatives or projects are decided. You will do this because we know we will get a financial benefit. And yes, we get some short-term financial success, but because the people are not really engaged, they're just being told what to do, that financial success is not sustainable. So what do we do financially? We tighten the screws even more more controls more audits more reviews you know we, we we need to really batten down on our budget and you know if you're if you think you're going to go over budget you need to get approval before that all that stuff is all really like financial engineering which in the long run really doesn't work we want to get into lean financial improvement so we want to focus on the root the operational root causes of financial issues as I say when I do in training, you know, if you want to change financials, you have to change the physical. Operations needs to change behavior or processes or the way they're doing performing in order to change financial outcomes. Focus on cross functional continuous improvement. Have the relevant and reliable measures that these teams can use to basically understand the, the links between operational issues and financial outcomes and drive, drive improvement through standardized work. We want to develop a deep understanding of relationships. There's really three relationships we want to understand. What is our operating performance? What is our capacity performance? What is our financial performance? And these three aspects need to be understood because they all influence each other. And that is the essence of a lean management accounting system. So how do you structure a lean accounting transformation? So your current state is probably a traditional management accounting system based on standard costing. Your near-term future state is eliminate standard costing information from management accounting and apply lean practices to your standard costing system. So what this means in layman's terms is stop using absorption, stop using variances, and stop using standard product costs to analyze or make decisions. Long-term future state, you can focus on eliminating standard costing. A lot of things have to be in place to get there, but don't focus on that in the short term. Create awareness of why you need to transform. How do you do that? Through training and education. Build desire. What's our current, what's the current state of our management accounting system? What should the future state look like? Set goals, specific time-bound goals. Demonstrate, lean accounting is like lean. 
start small with some pilots, generate real information that is being used because once you have the real information, people will see the benefits of that information. And then after you've conducted pilots, work on standardized work, coaching and improvement. Remember this, numbers drive thinking, thinking drives behavior, the behavior drives the decisions and the decisions drive the numbers. This cycle goes on in individuals, goes on with teams, it goes on in companies. Lean management accounting is putting new numbers into this cycle. So focus on the way people are thinking. How do you want them to think? You want them to focus on lean principles, practices, and tools. You want to drive lean type behavior. So that wraps things up. If you'd like to learn more about lean accounting, you could visit our website. Uh, you can sign up for a newsletter, mailing list. There's recorded webinars that you can get access to. We have a free lean accounting assessment, some case study videos, blogs. Uh, we have a free registration, free usage of our uh, LeanThink software product. Then there's the books. Here's my contact information. And you can contact me via email. Give me a call. You have any questions at any point in time. And I'll be glad to help answer your questions, explain more about lean accounting. So that wraps things up. And I'll turn it back over to, oops, sorry about that. I'll turn it back over to Dwayne. Yeah, th thank you, Nick. Uh, I don't know if you can go back to your last slide there where your, uh, your email address was. We had a couple people with uh, questions and I encourage them to uh, contact you with your email. Okay. So Nick, Nick let, me, uh, let me just thank you, uh, not only for sharing with us today, but just for your ongoing contributions uh, to the improvement community. And thank you for the contributions to the AME community. Um, I do look forward to seeing you in uh, Toronto this October at the AME conference. Um, and after what we've been through for the past couple months, it'll be good to, uh, to see some people face to face, some, uh, some great old friends and colleagues. Yes. Uh, the AME conference uh, has always been one of the highlights of, of my year. And this is coming from a guy who runs conferences for a living. So uh, that's no small statement. Uh, I really do always enjoy seeing some of the deepest lean thinkers and practitioners uh, all gathered in one place. So we're pleased to offer a $500 discount um, for today's webinar participants. Uh, if you register using the discount code AME Lean, uh, and you'll get an email after our session today, and we'll reference that again. So you can visit the AME.org website and uh, find the information for the Toronto conference and register using AME Lean for the $500 discount. And just as a reminder, be looking for some information as AME is looking at a virtual option to the conference as well. So stay tuned. So Nick, thanks uh, thanks again. And, and I really do appreciate it. And I know uh, there's a number of people that have questions and I have no doubt uh, that if they would be uh, uh, find use in your coaching uh, skills that uh, you certainly would be open to to those kind of engagements. So please do reach out to Nick if you'd like to take this conversation a little bit further. So thanks again, Nick, and thanks uh, to everyone who participated in today's webinar. There is light at the end of this tunnel that we've been in, uh, and I do know that our community is well-suited to come out on the other side of this uh, better for what we have all endured. So thanks, everyone. Now go do a good thing. All right.